Greetings fellow makers, I'm Brittany Duran from Punished Props and today I'm going to show you how I made Sortor's skull from Thor Ragnarok. I absolutely loved the movie and when I saw this skull crown thing show up on screen I just had to make my own. With the movie still in theaters I had to look around online for references and luckily for me figurines these days that are based on movie characters and props are incredibly accurate. This awesome Hot Toys Thor scale figure was an exclusive so I don't have my own but I found someone who does. Galaxy Beyond Media put up a video review of this road-worn Thor that shows up-close pictures of the skull that comes with the figurine. I took some screenshots of the video to use for reference, which was incredibly helpful. For this build, I ended up making the whole base form twice. This was my prototype. I refined the shape a bit and then I made templates. I used these templates to get the base form for version 2, which was great. They came together pretty well. If you want to try out this build for yourself, I did put our templates up on our free blueprint section on our website at punishprops.com. I'll start by going over how I made the base form for this build. Surtur's horns have a combination of hard edges and curves, so I thought I would make a digital pattern, at least for the horns. That'll help me get the size where I want it as well. I imported screenshots into Maya and created a low polygon model. While I was there, I decided to make the skull as well. The skull isn't supposed to have hard edges, so this will be modified later. The model was imported into Peppacore Designer and unwrapped to create the pattern. The skull isn't symmetrical and the horns are at slightly different angles with different spiky bits on each one. This is nice since the sides don't have to match, but it also means I need to create templates for both sides. I can't just make a template for half and flip it over. Also, this means the templates did use more paper. The first version of this prop was assembled from scrap EVA foam and old dusty floor mats. To help form the shapes, the horn pieces were cut at beveled angles, and I tried to keep track of how extreme the cuts were and modified them if needed. The skull shape came together pretty well. This prop is going to be huge. The hard edges on the skull were rounded with a knife and a rotary tool. 200 grit sandpaper smoothed out the seams. I sketched on the basic tooth shapes and cut away the extra foam. I did leave a bit of extra material around the teeth, nose, and eyes. Having extra material in the final version would be better than not having enough. I bulked up the center of the skull, which will have spine-like ridges carved in later. There's a jagged crack on either side of the skull temple that will make a handy seam line. The outer edges of the crack are raised up from the centerpiece, which I tacked in place with hot glue. I did glue on more scrap foam in areas that needed more of a curved shape. For the revised template, I covered the surface in crummy masking tape, making sure to overlap the pieces. I like the cheap masking tape for this since it likes to stick to itself but doesn't stick too well to the foam. New seam lines were sketched onto the tape and I tried using different colors as reminders for the parts that needed beveled angles. Notched registration marks would help all these pieces fit back together. I cut completely through the seam lines into the foam and added more seam lines when my patterns wouldn't lie flat. I played around with marking areas to partially cut into the back of the foam, which would hopefully help form the bendy organic shapes, like around the teeth area. I did name each of the pieces, but I didn't think to mark which pieces would attach back together where. This ended up not being a problem since the registration marks only match up one way. The crummy tape lost most of its adhesive, so I added more tape and attached all the templates to a large cutting mat, which has a handy one inch grid to it. I leaned over the cutting mat with my cell phone and took a picture. The lens is slightly wide angled, so I used a reference grid in Photoshop to skew the image back into place. The grid is also one inch, so I scaled the picture back to the right size. In Inkscape, I traced all the edges with vector lines, then created an offset line to reference which areas needed to be cut at angles. I also drew on the registration marks. 
I changed the offset to different kinds of dotted lines and deleted the offset where I would be doing normal straight cuts. I created a key to reference all of these different lines. The cutting angles are just estimates, and I'm not great at math, but I ended up with slight bevel cuts to extreme bevel cuts with the blade tip facing into the foam, and a reverse bevel cut with the tip of the blade pointing away from the foam. On the back of the foam, there's also partial cuts to help hinge the foam open and wedge cuts that will be glued together to form foam ridge things. I printed out my templates and checked the size. They match! There's more information about how I printed these templates in the blog post for this build, which will be linked in the video description. After cutting out the templates, I used a fancy pattern notcher to punch out all the reference marks. I could have just used scissors for this, but this tool is super fun. A roll of 10 mm EVA foam from TNT Cosplay Supply was used for the final version of the skull crown. I transferred the outside edges of the template, the registration marks, and the name of each piece but I didn't mark what kind of cuts I needed. I just kept the templates nearby so I could reference them when I was cutting. I ended up using almost a full roll of foam, 24 inches by 60 inches. The nice thing about EVA foam is how forgiving the material is when you glue pieces together that don't exactly fit. My cutting angles weren't perfect and my registration marks are close, but not exact. After I cut out a piece, I did check to see where it would fit together and if the cutting angles made sense. It's always a good idea to check the fit before you cut out every piece just to make sure you're doing all the angles right, and also before you add any glue. Speaking of glue, I use contact cement for all the attachments, making sure to brush all the way over the edge of each side, and waiting for the adhesive to look dry before attaching the pieces together. The dash lines on these skull pieces will have trenches cut on the back side, but I waited until the skull was completely glued together. While checking how the pieces fit together, I saw that the skull temples were going to be curved, so I helped them form the shape with a heat gun. This helps lessen the stress on the glue. Cutting and gluing the foam at beveled angles really helps force the eye sockets into place. I tried to always tack the registrations together first before pressing the rest of the seam together. The lower eye socket and jaw templates could have used more registration marks. I was glad I double checked how they would fit together before adding glue. The cracks on the skull temples didn't have registration marks. That was to remind me that the outsides of the cracks will be raised up on the seam. This was just to save some time on carving in the crack detail later, but it probably wasn't necessary. You could probably just glue them flush together and carve it in later. I ran into my first angle mistake when I checked the fit on the headpiece ridge. Two reverse bevel cuts combined together made the attached angle way too extreme, so I cut one of the sides to a straight angle instead. I did change that in the downloadable template. Due to the thickness of the foam and my angle cuts not being too precise, some of the connections had to be cut and modified to create clean seams. At least this whole shape is supposed to look organic, and it'll get sanded later, so it's fine if pieces are off a bit. I traced on the ridge areas on the inside of the skull. The ones on either side of the nose will be hinged open, and the ones above the teeth will be glued closed. With the blade retracted most of the way, I partially cut into the foam, cutting out wedges in areas that will create high points. Some of the removed foam strips were super glued and pressed into the cuts on the sides of the nose. The trenches were pressed together one at a time with contact cement. This ended up curling the teeth way too far. So I cut slits in between each of the ridges to add valleys and also open up the shape a bit. I could have cut more angles to bring out all of the skull detail this way, but for this project, I probably should have just skipped all of these back cuts and just carved in the recessed details from the front. I traced on the teeth and measured out 10 even strips on the head ridge. All of the seams were smoothed out with a rotary tool sanding drum. I used this sanding bit for most of the carving. It's old and doesn't have a rough sandpaper texture, just enough texture to remove the material but not enough to leave gouged out streaks in the foam. At first I was pretty timid at how much foam I removed. But this foam is 10 millimeters thick and areas like the top of the head ridge are extra thick since the foam was glued together at an angle. The foam was carved away in light passes and I kept checking the references and matching the details as best I could. 
Although, as long as I look kind of skull-like, I'd be happy. I wasn't interested in matching the reference exactly. I added an uneven texture to the entire surface by just wiggling the rotary tool around at a slower speed. This really helped hide all my crimes. I only used a rotary tool for the carving on this prop. If you'd like to see how a soldering iron works for organic carving, check out our Woothred Axe build. The pointy cheek details needed deeper carvings, so I glued on more 10mm foam to the back. The teeth weren't holding their shape, and I wanted the back molar teeth to be thicker, so I glued on a piece of 4mm foam to the molars and inside of the mouth. I tacked down the center first and pulled the teeth into place, stretching the 4mm foam. This helped keep the curve. I superglued the 4mm foam around the nose and then used a heat gun on the foam to press in a recess. Scrap foam strips were glued into the eye sockets to add more depth. I used needle files and sandpaper to bring out more of the tooth detail. Then heat formed the front teeth to have more of a curved shape. And the skull was done! The entire process to make the skull was the same way I made the horns. Some of the really extreme angles on the horn shapes had extreme bevel cuts, but the rest of the build is pretty similar. So let's do a crafting montage. With the prop fully assembled, I glued on chunks of scrap foam for a painting handle. Also, the nose recess was really bugging me, so I cut the whole thing off and glued on a new recess, which I liked way better. I could add detailed skull shapes to the back of this prop, but I really wanted to start painting it. Details on the back wouldn't be seen, and I kind of liked the goofy demon reindeer. I wanted a durable, slightly flexible finish on the skull that wouldn't wrinkle or show brush strokes. So I went with a two-part epoxy called Epsilon Pro. The epoxy self-levels and smooths out fine details, which is exactly what I wanted for this project. I mixed in black and white colorants to create a gray base color in the part A side of the epoxy. Then mixed in part B. The working time is increased by spreading the epoxy out onto a wide surface. The skull handle was clamped onto a stand that had a rotating Lazy Susan base. I started brushing on the epoxy in all the hard to reach areas and recessed bits. I had about 30 minutes of application working time, but I could still poke at the finish for another 15 minutes. This was probably because my shop was colder than the recommended curing temperature. The direction said that thick applications will start to sag and drip, which I started seeing in some of my heavy handed areas. I checked on my prop every 10 minutes or so and brushed away any pooling epoxy until it became too tacky to really mess with. 
I also brushed on every bit of surface I could see on the outside, on the inside, everything. That makes the whole thing hold its shape better. Three hours later, I brushed on a second layer, which went faster and used a little bit less epoxy. The next day, the finish was fully cured. My prototype foam horn was used as a test piece for the epoxy's durability. This scrap foam, probably from Harbor Freight, is a much squishier foam than my TNT Cosplay Supply foam, but it still holds up pretty well. Epsilon Pro can also be sanded. I ended up with some bubbles in my finish, and sanding filled in most of them with epoxy dust. The whole surface got scuffed up with a Scotch-Brite pad. I didn't have the patience to sand all the little recessed details perfectly. I at least wanted to rough up all the high spots. That's where the most wear would be and the paint might get removed. For the base paint, I sprayed on one light layer of matte black. This Krylon camo bonded to the sanded Epsilon Pro pretty well. In the reference pictures, it looks like the recessed areas are a lighter yellow dusty color and the rest of the skull is sort of a gray stone color. Watered down flow acrylics were used for the detail painting that I dabbed on with sponges and brushes. When applying the paint, the pigment looks pretty extreme, but when the water evaporates, a nice, subtle, slightly translucent color is left behind. I kept telling myself, the more layers with slightly different shades and colors, the better it would look. crazy huge. Now all I need to do is make some kind of chain holder thing so I can sling it on my back and walk around town and have people look at me weird. Actually, this is probably going to go up on my wall. I kept it the back handle thing and maybe I'll make an attachment that clamps onto this. I'm also thinking of maybe making the eyes glow like a flickery flame effect. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had an absolute blast learning about making templates with these kind of organic forms and I got some more practice foam carving, which was a lot of fun. All the tools and materials I used for this build are linked down in the video description. And if you want to use the templates to make this gigantic prop, they're over on our website at punishprops.com in the free blueprint section. The blog post on our website for this build also has more information about how to print out the files and some tips about how I glued everything together, also some things I might have wanted to do differently. Thanks again, and I can't wait to share another prop build with you.